All right, in this video, we will discuss Kinsley chapter 4, Healing Among the Kalahari Kung. As I said in the last video, this chapter focuses primarily just on the Kung. Um, they happen to be one of the most well-researched tribal indigenous groups, and that is one of the reasons why we're talking about them. The Kung people are, are quite interesting. You find them in southern Africa, and they have been hunters and gatherers since forever, basically. Uh, Homo sapiens, modern, anatomically modern Homo sapiens, have been around about 195,000 years. Well, the Kung Bushmen have been hunting and gathering virtually all of that time. Now, unfortunately, just recently, however, they've been losing some of their land uh, because it takes uh, a lot of land to sustain a hunting and gathering culture. Many, many, many acres per individual. And there are other cultures, uh, cattle herding cultures and more industrial cultures that are basically encroaching on their native lands. So unfortunately, and it's really sad, the Kung are slowly disappearing. At least their traditional culture is slowly disappearing. Ironically, given the fact that the Kung possess one of the simplest material cultures in the world. In regard to ideology, they're actually one of the most advanced cultures in the world. And what I mean by that is that, for example, they're very egalitarian. They have virtually no class consciousness, and men and women are virtually equal. In fact, the only real difference between the role of men and women in Kung culture is based on biology. The men, in fact, do all the hunting because they have to be away from the home base days at a time, which is simply impractical for women who are raising children. And so for that reason, we do have a very simple division of labor. Men do the hunting, women do the gathering and the homemaking. But as I said, that is due to biology more than anything else. Other than that, they consider men and women to be virtually equal. So, for example, healers in Kung society can be male or female. They also practice reciprocity and sharing, meaning that everything belongs to everyone. So if one individual is successful in the hunt, uh, he will return to the home base and share that with everyone. So all the goods and resources are owned and shared by everyone. All right, now in regard to their healing practices, the, the primary issue the Kung deal with is ancestors who seem to be constantly trying to pull the souls of humans uh, into their realm. As it says in the article, the ancestors simply want the living to join them in their spirit world. And it's thought that the ancestors will cause sickness in individuals with the intent of killing them, thereby pulling or capturing their soul. And so sickness, in virtually all cases, is simply diagnosed as being caused by ancestors. So obviously healing is going to involve traveling to the ancestral world, uh, dealing with the ancestors in some kind of way. So how do they accomplish this? Well, as I mentioned in the last video, everyone is thought to possess a special healing power or healing substance called NUM, N-U-M. And in the context of a healing dance, it's possible to agitate the numb or activate the numb. They use the term boiling over. They make the numb boil over. When you activate the numb, then you enter a state of kia, K-I-A, which is an altered state of consciousness. And in this state, the kun claim that they can actually see sickness in individuals. They claim to be able to actually uh, talk with the ancestors and consult with the ancestors. Uh, sometimes saving an individual involves reasoning with the ancestors.
Now these healing dances actually take place virtually anywhere that's marked off for the occasion. Uh, there's no special preparations made, no special places, because remember, people like the Kung conflate the natural and the supernatural world. So they don't make a distinction between the two. So basically the ancestors are everywhere we are. And often the healing will take place in the context of a large gathering uh, referred to as a giraffe dance where there could be as many as 50, 80 to 100 people present. And these are things that are calendrical. In other words, they're scheduled. And they're done for the benefit of everyone. So it's not as if there's a special occasion whereby they have convened everyone to handle one particular case. This is sort of a group healing kind of ceremony. And you could probably tell from this description that it's preventative as well as curative. I mean, there may be some people who are already sick, but it's also preventative in that the, the shamans in the state of Kia can actually really see what's going on. They can actually see sickness that's coming up down the road, maybe sickness in an incipient stage. Uh, so, so they're not only curative, but they're preventative. Now, they do have smaller gatherings where they may deal with one or two individuals, but generally speaking, healing takes place in these huge group contexts. As Kinsley says, these healing gatherings, these giraffe dances, are basically confirmations of life because it shows the Kung are standing strong as a community against the ancestors that want to harm them. And I think Kung uses the, the phrase, healing is a dance of life. Uh, yes, I mean, they're, they're affirming their right to exist without interference from the ancestors. Actual healing occurs when a shaman will embrace another individual. There's a photograph in the textbook on page 43 that shows you one case. And it's thought that the perspiration of the shaman actually contains healing power, numb. And that will be passed on to the patient. So that's one transference. Another transference goes the other way, whereby the sickness of the patient is transferred back to the shaman, who then has to deal with it and endure it and eventually expel it. So there's a two-way transference that's occurring here. So once again, we see another case whereby the spirit world is everything in regard to understanding ethnomedicine among the Kung. Clearly, there are psychotherapeutic aspects going on here. Uh, giraffe dances are, are you know, very loud, very impressive events that have been going on for ages. People have a, an entire community behind them, their family behind them. Uh, it's an impressive display of healing. And so clearly, uh, they are receiving some sort of psychotherapeutic benefit from these dances.